This seemed a nailed on loss, but never fear, Oxford fans. Captain Scarlet has arrived. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to OUFC Fan View. It's Ian here once again, and it's time for another review of another Oxford United game. Today, Oxford were at home to West Bromwich Albion. So after the international break, it's another big club that Oxford United have to test their mettle against. And also, it's another stern test of the unbeaten home form. And it's a test that Oxford United just about passed, but those Baggies fans will be wondering how they didn't win this game, because it seemed for all the money this was going to end up with a 1-0 West Brom win. But come off the hour, come off the superhero, and Captain Scarlet gets his first goal for Oxford United to rescue a point for the U's. It finished. Oxford United won. West Bromwich Albion won. So we'll do what we usually do on this channel. I'll go over the team news, I'll break down the game and go over the key chances, and then I'll give my final thoughts at the end for both sides. You can jump to any point of the video if you wish. If you just want to see the final thoughts, that's absolutely fine. You can use the timestamps down below. But if you do that... The very least you can do is hit like on this video because that does help me out a lot. And if you do like the content on the channel, and if you do like my silly little predictions videos as well, then please hit subscribe. So let's start with the team news for Oxford United. And it's a welcome return from injury to Oxford United skipper Elliot Moore. Moore is one of two changes to Des Buckingham's side. Ben Nelson joins Moore at centre-back. There was touch and go whether he would be playing because he went off injured against Portsmouth. But he pulls through. So it once again sees Kieran Brown playing at left-back. No doubt Poor Scowan in my comments will be spitting feathers at that because he is Greg Lee's number one fan. I see you, Paul. I see you. And as always, I do appreciate your comments. Does Paul have a point? Should Greg Lee be starting? Let me know down below. Sariki Dembele also returns to the starting 11, replacing Kyle Edwards, who doesn't make the match squad. Is he injured? Well, I'm sure we will find out. Hopefully not. It does mean Tyler Goodrum switches from the left to the right. No real problem there. It is five games without a goal, though, for Mark Harris, but he still leads the line up front. And Louis Sibley, who scored the equaliser against Portsmouth last time out, also can't force his way into the starting eleven. Moving on to the visitors then, and Carlos Corberan's baggies could have gone top today with a win, and they started the day in fifth place. It's been a very good start to the season for West Brom, but they just have had a little dip before the international break, and Corberan makes two changes from the side that drew with Millwall last time out. Uros Ratchet and Carlin Grant replace Jason Mulberry and Mickey Johnston for the baggies. But West Brom have been rock solid at the back this season. Only six goals conceded and three of them came in one game against Sheffield Wednesday. Ex-Oxford Loney Alex Mowat playing a bit deeper in midfield these days, but will be looking to pull the strings in there. And Josh Madger up front has been lethal so far this season and Oxford will desperately hope he can keep him quiet. So this game did get underway but there was the minute silence for George Baldock before the game and the tribute that Oxford United played to their ex-player. Very sad moment but perfectly observed by both sides and just I just wanted to say one thing before we get going. Commentators always call the Kassam Stadium unique. The Sky commentator did this very early on. You can call it rubbish, you can call it terrible, we agree with you. We hate it as well. Let's get back to business then. And the first chance of this game fell to the Yellows. After six minutes, it was Mark Harris who got it. He got in behind uh, from a long ball over the top. He kind of barged a J out of the way. Uh, no foul given. And I'm not sure it was a foul either. But it did mean that Harris was through on goal. It was a bouncing ball. And Harris's touch wasn't great. And it kind of narrowed the angle. It allowed Palmer to get out and block the shot behind for a corner. But a minute later, Darnell Furlong, with a fantastic run, got to the edge of the box and dragged his shot wide. So chances in the first 10 minutes for either side. Side. And I have to say, both sides settled quite well into this game. Both sides did really struggle to create any clear-cut chances. After 20 minutes, I was sitting there thinking, Oxford are doing okay in this game. Harris was causing a threat up top with balls over the top. Oxford looked very combative in midfield. And there's a number of times we won the ball in midfield and looked like we could have set counter-attacks away. We just didn't, could not create anything clear-cut. 
But you can never be too comfortable for too long in the championship. And after 23 minutes, the Baggies up their game and they had a decent spell and they came close after a series of set pieces, the last of which was a corner, which Hegem narrowly headed over the bar. But just five minutes after that, West Brom did take the lead. Dembele for Oxford United. He had the ball on the left-hand side. It was a difficult ball to control and Ratchet kind of bundled into Dembele. West Brom won the ball and they were able to get it across to Grant. He was about 25 yards out, bit of space, and he chanced his arm. And boy, didn't he? It's a fantastic low drive beyond Jamie Cumming and into the back of the net. It needed something special to break the deadlock and it certainly was. Oxford fans, Oxford players... Oxford manager Des Buckingham going crazy because they thought it was a foul on Sariki Dembele. But I don't think it was. I thought he was a bit soft, went over a bit easily. And I have no complaints that that goal was given. Three minutes later, though, Oxford really should have been level. Their best chance of the first half. Kieran Brown got free from a Will Vork's corner, but he could only head it over the bar into the fence behind the goal. It was a great chance, and at the very least, Brown should have hit the target. The rest of the first half, West Brom were in control, and they started to tighten their grip over Oxford United by as the minutes ticked by. Their passing and their movement was just a level above the U's, and they were starting to move the ball around the Oxford United midfield and wide areas with ease. 40 minutes on the clock, and you were sensing that Oxford desperately needed half-time as West Brom started to motor through this United side seemingly at will. Grant was the chief architect. He cut inside, drilled a shot straight at Jamie Cumming and then he started an incisive move just a couple of minutes later. It created an opening for Denjana but not for the first time in the game. A baggies forward just took too many touches in the penalty area and it just allowed Oxford to close the door and smuggle away the danger. So we got to half time and Oxford did manage to get to half time just the one goal down. The Oxford fans boo at half time directed at the referee mainly for that Dembele chance but again for me I don't even think that was a foul but and also for me West Brom did take a deserved lead into half time for about 20 minutes Oxford were pretty good but from that mark the baggies just started to take more and more control Grant looked phenomenal out on the wide left. Peter Chioso has been pretty solid so far this season, but Grant was causing him more problems than just about anyone. And Fellows was also causing Brown, Kieran Brown problems on the right-hand side. The biggest problem for West Brom is they've just been guilty of overplaying in the final third and just not really taking that chance to have a strike on goal when they could have had it. And I think Oxford need a little bit of a rethink here. They have been getting some joy from Mark Harris with balls over the top and I feel they need to keep trying that more and more as the game goes on I think they could even try to get Goodrum and Dembele in behind a bit more as well because we're not really seeing them influencing the game up top I actually would like to have seen Will Goodwin come on and Oxford to try and have two strikers but and be even more direct but the chances of that happening are pretty slim and none but it is still only 1-0 to West Brom so Oxford still have hope and they are still well in this game hope Hopefully we can get back into it in the second half. Oxford did start the second half quite brightly and their pressing nearly paid dividends straight away. It was a crazy blind back pass from West Brom out wide on their left, Oxford's right, where it just blindly got played back into the penalty area, almost straight to Dembele, but he just could not wriggle free and uh, the chance kind of went away. But as I say, Oxford have started brightly, nearly a gift from West Brom and just that craze of players trying to play their way out of trouble rather than just clearing their lines I never will understand it you could definitely sense that Oxford were more aggressive in their pressing and more aggressive in their tackling as they were trying to get back into this game but it still afforded West Brom's chances because they were still very good at playing their way around Oxford's press and they still do look dangerous from set pieces. Grant got a thumping effort away. It was a second phase from an initially cleared corner. And Ben Nelson got an important block to stop that from arrow and into the back of the net. Then there was an incident in this game where Mark Harris was played in behind. That happened a number of times in this game. On first look, it looked like Fellows had got back to make a very good tackle. But replays did show that he fouled Mark Harris. 
And um, that really should have been given as a free kick to Oxford, possibly a card of some description uh, to uh, fellows on that occasion. But Oxford didn't get the rub of the green on that occasion. And Harris kind of summed up his game, really, because he was just getting more and more frustrated, more and more wound up with decisions that didn't go his his way certainly not Sparky's best afternoon but once again you couldn't really fault the work rate of Mark Harris and the game was kind of drifting along really Oxford were trying to get back into it but West Brom were very stubborn and very resolute and Oxford were having a hard time breaking them down West Brom still looked look, looked quite dangerous when they went forward um, but again just weren't able to create anything clear cut them ch themselves it was a ratchet effort on 62 minutes uh, El Masuni did really well to get out to kind of close down the danger and it ended up being an easy save for Jamie Cumming so Des Buckingham made changes shortly after that uh, Dane Scarlett and Louis Sibley coming on for Mark Harris and Ruben Rodriguez. Uh, I would have loved to have seen Oxford keep Harris on and try Scarlett up top with uh, Harris for a little bit at least, but we never seem to get those types of changes. But those changes didn't massively affect the game. Um, not even with Abue coming on did Oxford really lay much of a glove on this West Brom back line. 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes to go. And you still weren't really seeing this Oxford United rallying cry. West Brom very comfortable, very hard to break down, very organised, dealing with all of Oxford United's attacking threat with relative ease. No real chances created, no saves for Palmer to make. And it looked like West Brom were going to come away from the Kassam with a relatively comfortable comfortable 1-0 win. But we ticked into injury time, 92 minutes on the clock and Oxford got their equaliser. It didn't seem likely, but I guess if you keep these games tight to Oxford's credit, you may just nick a goal. And that is exactly what we've seen. Will Vaux tried a long throw in for the first time of the game and it was a great one. It was flat. It was pacey. Elliot Moore was able to get a flick on at the near post and Dane Scarlett arrived on about the penalty spot and nodded home for his first Oxford United goal and out of nowhere Oxford rescued a point and that is how it finished I was quite glad the referee didn't add any additional time on after that one he seemed quite glad to blow up as soon as that clock ticked round to 95 minutes and Oxford keep their unbeaten home record intact it's a fourth draw in a row as I said at the start West Brom you'll be wondering how you didn't win this game but let's move on to those final thoughts. And that brings me on to the visitors in West Bromwich Albion. And I'm going to say this straight away. I thought that Carlos Corberan got his tactics right in this one. I thought the changes that he made paid dividends. I thought Ratchet was excellent in the midfield. And obviously Grant was the star player on show today. His goal was amazing. And his wide play and his wing play was superb as well. He Peter Chioso has been arguably Oxford's best player this season and Grant looked like he had the beating of him every single time. All the forward players I thought were impressive today, but it's just that kind of lack of cutting edge or that uh, just that so many times where West Brom got into dangerous areas and the final pass was poor or you overplayed it or a player took too many touches and Oxford were just stable to scramble the ball away. But overall, nothing but impressed with the pace and the movement of the forward players. I thought Madger drifted in and out of the game, but when he was in the game, he was really impressive, as was Danjana. Um, and again, it's just made the only thing I'm going to be critical of, and it's stating the bloody obvious, is you just didn't have that killer instinct to go and turn this 1-0 win into a 2-0 win. And I know that's going to be the overall frustration. But let me know your comments down below, West Brom fans. I still think, regardless of this annoying Oxford United side that have burgled a point for, away from you in this game, because you did deserve to win the game, um, I... I feel that you're going to have a successful season and it's built on that foundation of that strong defensive mindset that we didn't test Palmer in goal today and that back line, in including the likes of Furlong, who gets back and defends really well, but Ajay, Bartley, Hegum, Oxford didn't really have much joy against them today and it looked like you defended against us with relative ease. But all the pieces look there for me. All the pieces look there for West Brom to have a successful season and a season why they, no reason why they can't be challenging for an automatic space 
not just a playoff space. Uh, let me know your thoughts on that, West Brom fans. Um, it is just going to be that matter of that cutting edge and can you take your chances? Because for me, there's going to be a lot of 1-0 wins and a lot of clean sheets. And it's just a matter of whether you can turn those 1-0 wins into higher scoring wins. But let me know down below. Let me know your thoughts on the game. Let me know your thoughts on Oxford United. Plucky little annoying Oxford United. And we will see you as we go to the Hawthorns later on in the season. Good luck for the season and we'll see you soon. And that brings me on to Oxford United and sometimes uh, what you have written down for final thoughts can just get ripped up and thrown away for the final few moments in this game because Oxford United certainly weren't great in this one. I don't think we were bad by any stretch of imagination but we just didn't look like getting a goal in this one but then we got the goal and that kind of changes the narrative of how you feel about this one. It's another crucial point in our fight for staying up this season. And if, and that's the third game in a row where we've able to get a crucial point from a losing position. And that, above all else, shows that this Des Buckingham side has got that willing desire to fight. And fight until the final seconds to get things out of games. And above all else, above anything you can say about skill or quality, that is an admirable trait that is going to hold us in good stead for the rest of this season. And if we would have lost the game 1-0, I would have come away from this game thinking like, you know, sometimes in the championship, we're just going to come up against sides that are just better than us. And that's what it looked like West Brom were today. Just they got better players than us going forward and they were able to move the ball around and, cr and look quite threatening on occasions and there were some times where Oxford were kind of scrambling to stay in the game but more importantly they're so solid and so organized at the back because that is the biggest thing where Oxford just really didn't look like they were going to get a goal in this game today and it's actually quite surprising that we did but that isn't really detriment to Oxford United West Brom are a better side than us they are have got better players than us and sometimes we are just going to lose games based on the fact that sides just have got more quality than us but we kept it tight we kept hanging in there and at the end of the game we got that reward regardless of where we are at this stage of the season you have to think at the end of the season we are going to be in a relegation scrap so every single point we can squirrel away is vitally important and it's vitally important that it just keeps the fans on a positive note it keeps the good vibes going if we start like creeping in with the, those these little horrible one nil defeats where we don't play badly we don't play great you wonder if the enthusiasm starts to seep away but the fact that we're able to keep these points coming we're able to add to our points tally just keeps that feel good factor going and you know that's going to be key because you know at some point we are going to go on a bad run and for all the money in the world this one looked like it was going to be a 1-0 win to West Bromwich Albion and it, and again it's it, not that I thought Oxford were necessarily bad it was a wonderful goal which separated the sides and you just sensed that Oxford just weren't going to be able to get back into it because West Brom are so good at the back and we really did struggle going forward we other than that long ball over the top for Harris we, we struggled to get the wide players into the game there was a lot of the times where I got frustrated a little bit with um, Dembele where he would he would cut inside too much and wouldn't try and take people on on the outside I felt we really struggled to stretch West Brom in in behind in wide areas Malcolm Abue Oh my goodness, he just looks a guy short on confidence at the moment. As he, he didn't look like he wanted to take people on, always trying to cut in. And I just would like to see Oxford players trying to get down the flanks and get crosses into the box a little bit more. But on the whole, it's a positive point, isn't it? You come back to it. And I do think Oxford still looks solid and look pretty good in this game. I thought Nelson and Moore looked very good at the back. Um, I thought that Will Volks, I thought El Mazzuni, they did a good job of like snuffing out the danger when second balls came came in and around the edge of the penalty area. I did actually think Peter Chioso and Kieran Brown struggled a little bit on the wing, but they were up against exceptional wing wide players for West Brom and they struggled at times. They didn't have terrible games, uh, but probably just their weakest games they've had in a while. But And is Kieran Brown an upgrade on Greg Lee? Should Kieran Brown be starting at left back above Greg Lee? I know... Paul, I mentioned you at the start, you, you're going to say no on that. But um, 
let me know your thoughts because for me maybe there is an argument that Lee would have had a better job out there today with his athleticism his pace he might have had a better job up against the West Brom wide players fellows it was on Brown's side but obviously Kieran Brown didn't do a terrible job once again though you have to give credit for Des Buckingham with the changes that he made that influenced the game I thought for the second game in a row Louis Sibley came on and added a quality amount of energy to this Oxford United lineup he, he had that hunger he had that press and he wanted to make something happen. A siving foul on Alex Mowat got him a booking. But you know what? It wasn't a great foul, but I don't mind seeing things like that from time to time. And I did think Dane Scarlett looked really good. I thought he looked good even before he got his goal. I thought his movement was good and he, his hold-up play was decent up there as well. I've been relatively impressed with what I've seen from him so far. And now he's got that goal. Now he's got on the end of something. He's got that little bit of confidence. You know he's been searching for a league goal for a long, long time. And he's got that monkey off his back now. And I think Des Buckingham should start Dane Scala against Derby on Tuesday night. It's not a slight on Mark Harris. But I feel that Scarlet deserves that start now. It's great that we've got this competition. We've been asking for this competition up front. Hopefully, Scarlett can provide a few goals to take that pressure off Sparky and to have that natural competition, which I think can also bring the best out of Mark Harris. I also think Malcolm Abue deserves a start. I don't think he was very good when he came on, but I think he needs a bit of confidence. I need, think he needs a bit of confidence of having maybe give him a start. Des Buckingham should give him a go against Derby County. Give him an hour, see what he can produce. Tell him to just go out there and play with some freedom. And because it is going to be a different test when we play against a Derby side who aren't you wouldn't think are going to be as good as this West Brom side certainly the way they move the ball so maybe having a player that isn't going to be as focused on defense you could just say to Malcolm Abu just go out and give it all you got take those Derby players on and cause some trouble and see if we can build his confidence up a little bit it probably won't happen, but there you go. And I'm getting to the point now where I'd like to see a little bit more punch from our record signing, a little bit more impact from our record signing. I'd like to see Dembele contribute with an assist or a goal sometime soon. And I feel that I wouldn't actually mind seeing him and Abue start on the flanks and then see Tyler Goodrum come in instead of Rodriguez or El Masuni in that midfield role. I haven't talked too much about referees. I hate to do that. Yeah, he wasn't great. He made some some questionable calls. And there were some calls that kind of went against us that could have gone our way. But that is how decisions are in the championship. That's how they were in League One. Refereeing quality isn't that great. And you just have to be a bit chips for where they are with it. But I think overall, this is a point game for Oxford United. That refusal to lose is fantastic. And... Overall, though, although I do think West Brom deserved to win the game, they didn't really test Jamie Cumming on too many occasions. And I do think this Oxford United back line did a really good job, and that includes the midfield away, of keeping this game tight to give us the opportunity of trying to get something out of it, even though we had to get it really late in the game. So... Let's move on to Derby. I think we have to earmark this one as a game we can certainly win. And... If we can get another point out of it, I will take that as well. But I think I think we can get a win out of this Derby County game. Let me know down below. We need to get a little bit of revenge from that 3-2 defeat we had last season. Let me know your thoughts, Oxford fans. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your Saturday evening. And I'll be back to do a predictions video and then a review of Oxford versus Derby on either Tuesday evening or Wednesday morning. Thanks very much. I'll see you soon.